Hey there, everyone. Nick Detman here uh, with you today. Another edition of the Detman Media Podcast, where we discuss and go over the latest trends, insights, and tips on how to improve your social media marketing and your digital marketing, including website design, search engine optimization, and so forth. So glad you can join me here today, and I appreciate everyone that has uh, continued to show support for the podcast. Hopefully, uh, some of the things we've talked about and gone over have uh, helped you in some shape, way, or form uh, in terms of fixing and updating your social media and uh, digital media marketing strategies uh, here in 2021. So again, hopefully it's uh, been useful for you, and I pre- again appreciate your support. Uh, If you haven't already done so, please head over to my blog, which is nicholasdetman.blogspot.com. Again, nicholasdetman.blogspot.com. There you'll get regular updates on the latest trends, news stories, tips, insights, and a whole lot more um, in regards to social media and website and search engine optimization, Google Analytics, and so forth. Uh, And it will be delivered right to your email inbox uh, each and every day uh, that uh, I make a post. So hopefully you head on over there and uh, subs- click on the subscribe option when you go to the blog, which again, nicholasdetman.blogspot.com. So uh, I've got quite a few things here to cover here today, so we'll just jump right into it. And the first thing I want to go over is Google Analytics 4. And we've kind of had some conversations here the last couple weeks about Google Analytics 4. And if you're kind of like me that's uh, trying to learn more about the program and kind of getting a firmer grasp on on the program itself, um, you'll notice a lot of changes um, with it. And it's just uh, the big thing, um, at least for me in the early going, and still kind of piecing things together. But uh, I feel right now I've got a pretty good handle on the program, what it's telling me, uh, and what things that we should be measuring uh, off of Google Analytics 4. Um, that's a, It's an updated program from the universal Google Analytics that uh, we became familiar with. Uh, so there's obviously good things and uh, things to just taking and adjusting to. And among the many things to get adjusted to is just some of the terminology uh, that appears on it. So, uh, so that's what we'll go over here in this spot here. So um, well, the Google Analytics 4 has been really kind of been slowly integrated into the industry over the last several months, I think even maybe within the last year or so, um, as people start to kind of learn Google Analytics 4, what are some things that it tracks, how can we track what we used to track, can we do it anymore, what's new. Uh, so there's there's a, it's, it's a big learning curve, I, I won't lie to you, and it's it's been challenging but also kind of interesting and fun at the same time. Um, so some of the terminology, like I mentioned, has changed, and some presentation of data in previous versions have changed. So uh, one of the biggest things that Google um, valued with this uh, new analytics program, um, what they considered was the most valuable information uh, to us as website analysts or marketers, was engagement. Uh, the Google Analytics 4, or commonly known as GA4, is a platform that focuses on a person's engagement or event on a website. Uh, and what is an event? So, and an event can be a scroll, a click, downloading a PDF, submitting a form such as signing up for a newsletter, navigating to multiple pages, and, and a lot more. Uh, it's essentially it's any action that's made or taken on your website is going to be considered in an event and an engagement. And according to Google, the reason for this emphasis because uh, it was believed that data like the bounce rate that you saw in the Google Analytics Universal Analytics Program, or GA3, gave an inaccurate perception of a website's performance. Uh, a site that has a high bounce rate may be considered failing. Maybe I think the, the number was if it was 55% or higher. Uh, and obviously, if you had uh, it above 70%, it would maybe trigger some red flags. Okay, what's going on with the website? But according to Google, in actuality, it may not be that bad. Uh, it could simply be the person found what they were looking for and then went away. So if you gave, say, for example, if you gave um, um, a direct link to a website page, uh, such as if you're advertising for a job or say, hey, we're hiring, and you go right to the jobs page, uh, we give them like uh, www.company.com slash jobs, they're going right to that site. Maybe they're just scrolling through the jobs and boom, they're done. And that's, in the old analytics, that would have considered um, a, a high bounce rate, where with the new GA4, 
it logs that the, the person scrolled and took time to read. So I, an event is also, or an engagement is doing, spending at least 10 seconds on a page. So that, and that 10 seconds means that somebody could be reading something off of that page. And obviously that's what you want. You want people to engage with your site and engage with your pages. So that is uh, one big thing and an example of what uh, GA4 now measures. And I think that's a good adjustment. And I think it's going to go well for us in, um, as digital and social media marketers, uh, specifically those who work with website analytics such as myself, that's going to be that's going to be a very valuable tool. And or how engaging are uh, the pages? Uh, and you kind of look through some of the other data points and, and data that's being logged by GA4. Uh, there are many important ones uh, that the platform is is measuring. And there are I have several that will help evaluate the success of your website. I'm just mentioned engagement and events per page. Uh, another is one of the, uh, is understanding the uh, referral traffic or what was formerly known or, or it's referral traffic and or it's also called traffic acquisition. Um, it was well, it was called source and referral uh, in the old GA3 program. Now it's considered. Uh, there's two options. There's user acquisition or traffic acquisition. Uh, user acquisition is simply how do people find your site. And we'll go over a few of those here in a second. And then traffic acquisition is simply the source of where people came from uh, to get to your site. Um, I said this was called source and referral in Google Analytics Universal or GA3. And there are three kinds of traffic acquisitions or as we remember source and referrals. Um, one is organic. And it's a search engine result, such as Google, Bing, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, uh, any other ones that you can think of. That is considered an organic source slash referral or traffic acquisition. A referral is a referred by another website or social media site. That's similar to the way we saw it before. And one that's a little different um, from the previous uh from the UA, uh, GA3 uh, was direct and none and then that is kind of a referral is unknown or the user setting is preventing tracking now with direct and none there there are several possibilities um, to what the source or referral is to a website but unfortunately we won't able uh, to know because of maybe some uh, preferences set by the user and the computer uh, but some examples of what a direct non-referral source could be is the user directly types in the URL, uh, user clicks on a bookmark in their web browser, user clicks on, an e on a link in an email, user clicks on a link in a document such as a PDF or a DocX or ODF or an Excel spreadsheet, uh, the user clicks on a link in a mobile app, user clicks on a link from a secured site like the HTTPS um, uh, sites and to your not to a non-secured site, which is the HTTP uh, URL, or user clicks through a UL, URL shortener. Uh, and you also may come across what's called as not set. And here's how Google defines not set. Uh, it is a placeholder name that Analytics uses when it hasn't received any information for the dimension that has been selected. Uh, the reasons for not set appearing as a dimension value vary according to the report. So, unfortunately, there's just not a, really a way to find out more about uh, your your source or your referral source or your traffic acquisition uh, if you see not set. So that's unfortunate uh, in that respect. All right. So moving to the next topic here, um, we're going to talk a little bit about Clubhouse. Uh, if you're uh, not real familiar with it, Clubhouse is kind of the latest social, social media buzz platform, uh, and it focuses on audio communications between users, uh, similar to chat rooms from way back in the day. Uh, but instead, this is, the difference here is using voice you know, instead of us um, pounding away on the keyboards like uh, AOL Instant Messenger. Uh, hopefully, I'm not dating myself there, which I think I just did. Um, but it's, it works kind of similarly, and it's uh, just kind of a way for people to talk to one another. Yeah, um, through social media. Uh, you can't see what they are outside of their profile picture. Um, because of it, it's seen remarkable growth, according to TechCrunch.com. Uh, per its estimates, Clubhouse grew from about 3.5 million global downloads as of February 1st of this year to 8.1 million by February 16th. So in 15 days, the app grew in terms of downloads by 161%. That's just mind-blowing. 
Because of that, other social media platforms such as Facebook and Twitter are responding by working and creating their own such tool. Now here's where Clubhouse uh, has some challenges ahead because of it. Currently, getting on Clubhouse is by invitation only. Uh, for example, just myself, I just got it a few days ago from a friend who invited me into it, and I put in a request to join the app. I can't even remember, but several weeks ago for sure. Um, but considering the increased competition, Clubhouse says it has a problem in trying to keep up with the demand. Um, Clubhouse is also not available on Android uh, from articles that I've been able to track down. And that's going to hurt the platform's growth right now, especially if Facebook's and Twitter's variation of the idea take off. So you've got two, two big problems Clubhouse is facing right now in terms of being able to um, open up the app for all users. Um, not just on Apple or iOS, but also onto Android and other, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, application stores. Th that could really hurt in terms of its growth. And again, if that's, especially if Facebook and Twitter, um, there, are, there are variations of the idea um, and the, of the tool take off. And Twitter's already kind of started it pretty closely with Twitter Spaces. Um, I have not had a chance to... I'll work with it yet, but hopefully we'll get a chance to here in the near future. And uh, Facebook, I know, is still in, in development there. Uh, so this is going to be a, an important topic looking at going forward. Um, and it will be worth watching because uh, can Facebook and Twitter knock off Clubhouse um, before Clubhouse can catch up uh, with its demand? So that's uh, it's going to be an interesting next several months uh, for sure. And then the last point we'll touch on here today um, is going to we're going to be talking about Facebook and testing. They've announced that they're going to test a uh, what's called the green screen option for stories, uh, popularized by TikTok um, and maybe a little bit even by Snapchat. Uh, Facebook says it will explore implementing implementing green screens for stories creators, according to SocialMediaToday.com. Uh, if you're not familiar with what green screens are, uh, its usage can overlay their video over a selected video or image and upload it onto their stories reel. So like somebody can have a video playing behind them. Um, common one is maybe a, if somebody is at a, I'm trying to think of an example, but essentially it's uh, an overlay where you can put a video or an image as a, as a backdrop and while you, do, you shoot your video um, at the forefront. Uh, Twitter has also begun working on implementing this tool uh, in regards to its fleet uh, option. So um, if this goes through, this could provide a unique branding opportunity for businesses. So say if you have a CEO or somebody um, that wants to do a uh, discussion, um, you can do, drop a green screen behind them uh, with the company logo. Uh, it's almost like if, you're, if you, you've watched uh, some press conferences, it's almost like dropping down a curtain behind uh, the speaker. So this could provide, uh, like I said, a, ver a unique branding opportunity for businesses. So that will uh, cover the topics here today. So again, thanks so much for, for listening. Hopefully you found some of the information here today useful. And um, be sure to keep checking back with the podcast and also head back over to the blog, nicholasdetman.blogspot.com. Click on subscribe and you'll get uh, the latest news, tips, insights, and so forth delivered right to your email inbox. Now, until next time, everybody stay safe, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank